And good morning, everyone, and welcome to California Department of Veteran Affairs uh, virtual workshop for California State Parks and National Parks. Uh, my name is Kirk Eller. I am a CalTAP training coordinator here in Veteran Services at CalVet. And first off, I would like to recognize uh, today is Pearl Harbor Day and a National Day of Remembrance for uh, in honor of those Pearl Harbor survivors, as well as those who served in Pearl Harbor on December 7th. So uh, we do want to recognize today is Pearl Harbor Day. Uh, welcome to our webinar. Uh, we have a really good webinar today. This is kind of unique for myself and my colleague, uh, Sean Campbell, who will be on board with me. Uh, we will be presenting some information on how to get your veteran state park pass and your national park pass. So uh, there's we get a lot of questions sometimes about this and a lot of calls uh, regarding these benefits. So uh, we're really excited to provide this uh, kind of like tutorial, so to speak, on how to actually navigate getting these benefits that you've earned. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to go through uh, next slide, Sean. Uh, some housekeeping. If you're not really familiar with the Zoom process, uh, we do have a platform and uh, we actually ask and encourage you to ask questions at the end. Uh, so first off, we're going to navigate the, the Zoom functions if you're not familiar with the toolbar. We do ask that you open up the Q&A tab and the chat function. Uh, and if you have questions, please post them in the Q&A and we will address them at the very end or throughout the webinar if uh, our subject matter expert or myself are able to access the question. Um, please uh, refrain from any personal information in the question if you can. Uh, we would like to keep them in general in nature uh, so that we can keep it as an open forum. Uh, and then also my colleague, Sean Campbell, who's also a training coordinator, uh, he's going to be fun. I'm going to be, uh, he's going to be doing the main portion on the parks. Uh, I'm going to be kicking off uh, the beginning of this with a CalTAP overview, just basically what your, gener your California benefits are and how to navigate our website. Um, so that's our agenda. And without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get, get started. Uh, my name is Kirk Eller. Uh, I am a Marine Corps veteran. I served from 1986 to 1990 as a helicopter crew chief. Uh, I came to work here in CalVet in 2019 and uh, then transferred over into vet services uh, in December of 19. So I've been here uh, almost four years uh, coming up in a couple weeks. Uh, next slide, please. So CalTAP was actually designed and informed uh, to inform connect veterans of all eras of their earned federal and state benefits. And how we do that is through our five pathways, which are the core curriculum, education, employment, entrepreneur, and our service providers pathway. Uh, since the pandemic and throughout, we've done multiple webinars on each one of these pathways. Uh, you can actually go to our YouTube channel and actually access recorded webinars on all of these. Uh, but today we're going to focus on the core curriculum in your California specific benefits. Uh, uh, it's, it's specifically the parks pass and the uh, hunting and fishing passes. Uh, next slide, please. So first off, I want to mention that I'm going to be putting some information in the chat, including a copy of our Vetter resource book. This book right here is actually a very, very important tool for you as all veterans. The information in there is uh, very informative and it's it's important for you to know where to access those benefits. And that's what we do as a CalTAP training coordinator, providing you information what's in the book. So a hard copy of that or a virtual copy is highly encouraged. I'm going to be posting some of that in the chat as soon as I'm done doing the overview. Uh, so you'll see it in the chat a little bit later. Uh, so please bear with me. You're also going to receive uh, some other resources and links in the chat for other resources as well. Uh, I do want to mention that this re is being recorded and we will upload this to our YouTube channel at a later date. So please be patient. Uh, if you're not able to log in, uh, we will have it posted on our YouTube channel at a later date. Next slide. So here's CalVet's website, uh, our homepage, so to speak. Uh, it, to access the CalTAP portal, you would go to the highlighted link there where the laptop is. Next slide. And here you can see each one of the pathways that I had mentioned previously. Uh, and today we're going to focus solely on the core curriculum pathway, which is going to cover a lot of your California-specific benefits. Next slide. So here you can see each one of these modules 
they're self-paced. You can access the, the valuable information in each one of the modules uh, at any time regarding healthcare or how to do claims of compensation. Uh, but the module five is where your California specific benefits will be located. Uh, so next slide. And everybody wants to know what your California specific benefits are. Next slide. Um, some of our most famous, our most popular benefits obviously are the college tuition fee waiver. Uh, this is a fee waiver and benefit for the veteran dependents. Uh, and how that works is if the dependent is eligible to, to attend a state funded school uh, and the veteran has a service connected disability rating through the US Department of Veteran Affairs from either 0% to 100%, the dependent children or spouse, if under certain plans, would have their tuition waived at any state funded school. If you'd like to learn more about this, you can go to our website or we can address in the Q&A at the end. It's a very popular benefit. Another one is also the veteran designation on our driver's license. Uh, this is an excellent benefit. It is free of charge now. Uh, it actually allows you to show that you're a veteran without having to carry multiple identifications. You would just have your DD-214 and contact your county veteran service office to verify your eligibility. They would provide you some information in a letter and you take it to the DMV with your application to have it added to your driver's license. Uh, for a motor vehicle registration fee waiver, there's a little bit more intensive application process, but this one, the veteran would have to have a service-connected disability rating of 100%, uh, and then there are some forms that would require some eligibility verification through the County Veteran Service Office, and then you would take those documents to the DMV, and you would be able to have your vet registration for a vehicle waived in the state of California. Next slide. So I'm not gonna go into the hunting and fishing and the no cost parks pass because my colleague, like I mentioned, Sean is gonna be going in detail about this. Uh, but I would like to mention that the disabled veteran property tax exemption and the business license exemptions uh, do require a 100% service connected from the VA. Uh, and then to access more information about that, I encourage you to contact your local county tax assessor's office where you pay your taxes because each county has a specific exemption based on the county and what you pay your taxes. Next slide, please. Uh, here's a list of some of our veteran services division, our home loans division, which provides a, a great home loans option for veterans here in the state of California. Uh, our women veterans division provides advocacy and outreach for women veterans, as well as our minority and underrepresented veterans uh, division. They provide excellent services for these demographics. Uh, it, additionally, uh, veterans that are unnaturalized, that are seeking to have their citizenship, uh, they actually assist with that process, which is a really good program for them. Um, we also have eight veteran homes throughout the state of California for long-term care, uh, provides excellent care for our aging veterans, uh, a, from skilled nursing, as well as independent living and memory care units. Uh, their excellent care. Uh, we have three state cemeteries, uh, one in Seaside, California, near Monterey. There's another one in Northern California up in Redding uh, by Igo. Uh, the third one is attached to the Yachtville Veteran Home in Yachtville, California. And currently there is a fourth under construction in the Los Angeles area in Southern California uh, in the Lake Forest area. It is not uh, completed at this time. Uh, not sure when their completion is going to be come done. So just keep posted on that one. Next slide. All right, this is how CalTAP wants to stay connected with you. Uh, I'd like to mention our, our social media pages there, our QR codes for Instagram and Facebook, as well as CalVet's page, uh, but also the YouTube channel. I did mention that before. So this is being recorded and it will be uploaded there at a later date. So you can access it for future reference. Uh, you can also register for My CalVet on our homepage uh, and add uh, attend webinars like this and also fill out the survey. Uh, the survey uh, is a great way for you to provide feedback to what you need as a veteran and what you're looking for, for what kind of benefits, but also for us to do that continuous improvement and provide the those things, the benefits that you're looking for. So we do encourage you to take time to fill out that survey. Next slide. This is where you would go to register for MyCalVet on our homepage. 
uh, just click the register here, fill out your information, and they'll send you an email verification. Next slide. Once you are registered, you can actually receive emails for our upcoming announcements for workshops, which will enable you to register them for like uh, this it's this workshop, like the one you registered for today. Next slide. Um, we also want to mention the VA's website. Uh, this is an important partner that we uh, provide information and work with collaboratively. Uh, VA has changed their e-benefits where you would manage your, web ma manage your benefits to one portal, which is my VA. Just go to the va.gov website and sign in, and then you would be able to access and manage your VA benefits and healthcare in one portal. Next slide. This is my contact information, uh, my phone number and my email there. Uh, please email me or reach out to me if you have any questions going forward on anything that we've spoken about today or in the future. And then uh, also, uh, I'm also going to be covering the information for our link coordinators. So next slide. Uh, I do want to talk about our link coordinators because they play an integral part of connecting better, better veterans with their benefits uh, region-wide in the state of California. Next slide. This map, which I'm going to be posting in the chat shortly, uh, is an important part for where you're located to access benefits in your region. Uh, we have eight regions throughout the state, which is actually set up in the emergency management, um, the FEMA map. So the Northern California, Bay Area, Central California, the Inland Empire, the Central Coast, Los Angeles, Orange County, and the San Diego region. Each one of these links uh, actually works in these regions to connect veterans to their benefits. They also, uh, next slide, please. Oh, I'm, I wanted to mention, go back to that slide for a minute. I wanted to mention that each one of these links has a, a specific email and their name on the map. If you have to access any information from them, please reach out to them by their email. Uh, in their region, you can access from the map, their email address on there. Next slide. So this is what they provide, outreach and service members and veterans to their families uh, in their region. They also make great referrals and uh, that warm handoff directly to established service providers like the VA or EDD or any of the schools that you're providing information to. But they also provide assistance with local emergencies. And this is huge. When there's disaster relief centers or local assistance centers set up for flooding or fires, uh, which is very common here in the state of California that we all know, their integral part of the veterans that need access to those benefits, they can assist firsthand in those regions. So they go to the local assistance centers and provide that outreach directly to them during those um, emergencies. Next slide. They can also assist with connecting you to benefits for employment and training, uh, your California state benefits or the County Veterans Service Office, and also through us, us here in CalTAP or other CalVet um, coordinators. They can also assist with healthcare through the VA or vet centers, uh, and they have direct contacts at each one of these agencies. So that's where they're a network coordinator and how they provide that assistance to get you connected. Next slide. This is the uh, email address and the phone number for CalVet and the email for CalTAP. If you have any questions about how to email the individual link for your region, you can go to this link. Uh, and I'm also going to be up downloading the map in the chat as well. So that's going to do it for me. And now I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Sean Campbell. Uh, and we're really excited to provide this webinar on California State Parks and National Parks. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Sean. And uh, you can take it away, brother. Uh, thank you so much, Kirk. I really appreciate it. And uh, as Kirk said earlier, today is uh, December 7th. So we want to take that moment to really recognize and honor the people that responded to that emergency on December 7th, 1942, Pearl Harbor. As someone who spent eight years in the Navy, Pearl Harbor really uh, is something that sticks out in my mind. And when I was in boot camp, my uh, my actual unit was sponsored by some of the survivors of Pearl Harbor, so I got to meet some of them. Really, world's a lot smaller than you think sometimes. 
Today, we're here to talk about California state parks and national parks. So my, my goal here is just to really explore some of the stuff out there, give you some good information about the programs, answer some basic questions, and um, really just make sure that we have a good understanding of, of, of how the system works and, and what it is. So with the state of California, there's the State Department of Parks and Recreation, and then hunting and fishing is covered by the Department of Fish and Wildlife. And that's how California kind of breaks up those two things. Now, on the federal agencies, on the federal side, you've got the National Park Service that takes care of the parks, and you've got the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services. So you've got the national government here, and then you've got California and all the other states. So how do they work together, and how do they interact? And that's what we're here to really talk about today and explore and talk about some of the different passes and programs that they have. So let me start off by talking about California, our beautiful home, and uh, the state park system that works out here. What's really amazing about California is it has 280 state parks and they cover over 1.4 million acres, just a huge amount of territory and 280 miles of that is coastline. So you got a lot of beautiful parks. My son actually just came back from a weekend with his friends at Dillon Beach. So with over 15,000 campsites and just thousands of miles of hiking, biking and equestrian trails as well as ATV stuff, California has a lot of beautiful things for you to explore. So when it comes to talking about the different parks and the different parks passes, there's several categories. And I understand that sometimes it can be a little confusing to people. So I just want to take a moment and explain some of the different categories of parks passes. There's distinguished veteran, disabled with a discount, California State Library Pass, fourth grader free pass for adventure, golden bear, and then when you're buying annual passes, there's several categories of annual passes. So we're just gonna talk about some of these. Obviously, as the Department of Veteran Affairs, we really wanna talk about the Distinguished Veterans Pass first. Um, the thing about the Distinguished Veterans Pass is that it allows you uh, for free to access all the basic facilities. The way that they had the pass before, it needed a renewal every year. Now it needs a renewal every five years. And the eligibility requirements for that Distinguished Veterans Pass are gonna be um, a wartime veteran with a 50% or higher disability rating, or if you were a prisoner of war or a Medal of Honor recipient. Those are the three checkpoints for that distinguished veteran um, pass for the to, uh, for the eligibility. Now for the disabled pass, it's a discount pass that provides a 50% discount. So for persons with a permanent disability, it allows that vehicle day use, uh, family camping, and it allows for boat use as well. And once you get this pass, it's a lifetime pass for the car holder. So it's pretty cool. And it gives you that, um, that lifetime ability. And if you look in the lower right-hand corner of the screen, there's an example of what the, uh, the pass actually looks like. California State Library Pass. This is something that I've been uh, talking to a few different people about who've enjoyed this. It gives you access to over 200 different state parks. And each of the libraries, including the mobile libraries now, which is a really cool concept, they receive these passes. The library card holders can actually check out a pass. So if you know, hey, I'm gonna go down to, to Dillon's Beach, I'm gonna go to the library, check that one out. And then the pass is for up to nine persons uh, within the vehicle or a motorcycle. And then we got the QR codes down there so you can scan and watch some more videos and get some more information on how to check these out. And as my teammate Kirk said before, we're gonna drop a PDF copy of this presentation into the chat so you can uh, do that at your convenience. The fourth grader adventure pass. So this is really geared for fourth graders and their families so they can go out during that year of their education that they're really learning a lot about California and really go out and see the places that they're learning about. The pass provides access to 19 different state parks and when you have the pass it includes up to three adults and your siblings. So it's cool. It really allows the whole family to go. And a list of the parks that you can access with that can be found on the link below down there. Golden Bear, this provides access to over 100 California state parks. And to be eligible for the Golden Bear, you either have to be receiving uh, SSI, CalWORKs, or if you're over 62 years old with income restrictions. So 100 parks is a lot, and it gives you a good variety to, to visit and enjoy. And then this pass right here, it's a limited use pass for off-peak seasons only, and um, the $20 annual fees actually covers the applicant and 
a domestic partner. And this is called the Golden Pair Limited Use Pass. And it provides access to most California state parks. At the end of this, again, there's 280 parks. So I wanna make sure that I streamline everything. At the end of the presentation, there's a couple of QR codes you can look at and it'll give you a really strong list of the different parks and which ones give you availability. So when you're applying for these, it can be a little confusing. You start the application process on reservecalifornia.com. That's where you actually start the application process. And when you go to this website, it's going to actually, give me one second here. If you see where the arrow's at, it'll, you're going to navigate to create an account. And then once you're there, you're going to create an account. Uh, it's going to ask you for some basic information, your name, address, that kind of stuff. And then once you create an account using this website, you're going to go to where it's, you're going to, it's going to log you out and you're going to log back in. And then you're going to go to where it says passes. And then once you get to the section that says passes, then you'll actually make the application for your passes. And you can either submit it for disabled discount, distinguished veteran, golden bear, or limited use. And then there's another drop down tab for the other passes as well. And I think that the challenge that a lot of people run into is that when you go to the California Parks website, um, they have an excellent website and there's um, there's a lot of tools you can navigate, but you have to create an account to apply for the passes and then you go back to their website um, for different for different things. And again, here's some of the uh, different passes and what they look like when once you start navigating through entering your information and using the drop down tabs to find which pass works best for you. So some tips that I've learned during the application process, try to keep the file sizes small, like under 10 megabytes. Um, if you've got any kind of super phone and you take a picture, it's gonna be a lot more than 10 megabytes. So maybe you wanna take that picture and then transition into a PDF format. So that way it'll upload uh, very simply. They're gonna ask for multiple documents such as your uh, you know, identification, that kind of stuff. So make sure that you include the front and the rear of those documents. And then it is a computer-based system. And just like any other system, when you're doing applications, don't let it time yourself out. Um, I'm notorious for starting an application and then my wife will call me, I'll grab a cup of coffee, get in the middle of something, and then I come back and I'm like, uh-oh, time me out. So make sure that you set yourself up for success and don't let the system time you out. So that was the California State Parks Pass. So let me transition a little bit and talk a little bit about the National Park Service and some of the stuff the National Parks Pass has. So the National Parks Pass provides free access for military active duty, veterans, and Gold Star families. Federally, there's over 2,000 locations that you can really enjoy. Within California, we have 28 National Park Service locations, but throughout the United States and, of course, the beautiful island of Puerto Rico, you can uh, enjoy a lot of things. I actually use my National Parks Pass to go to a couple of the castles that they had in Puerto Rico that were back from like the 1600s. Really, really cool. This is just a map of some of the different parks and where they're located throughout the state of California. Redwood Park, Lassen Volcanic, Pinnacle, Sequoia, Channel Islands, which I heard is really cool. Joshua Tree, which I've been to before, which is nice. Hot, bring some sunscreen. So Alcatraz Island, the Rio National Monument, Cesar Chavez National Monument. That one sounds cool. I haven't been to that one yet, so I'm looking forward to seeing what it's like. Channel Islands, uh, Port Chicago Naval Magazine. So back in the day, Port Chicago was a place where they had um, a very large incident regarding ammunition. So they have a really large historic monument there. Something cool to look into if you're a history buff. And then the Rosie, the Riveter World War II home front. I haven't seen that one yet either. I'm looking forward to checking that out. This is just a kind of a matrix so you can look at the different types of national parks passes out there. There are a lot. So I don't want you to look at this and feel like overwhelmed. I want you to look at this and kind of focus on the one that uh, I highlighted. So if you're a veteran, you can apply for the military lifetime one. If you're still on active duty, then if you look to the right, there's the one that called the military annual. And then if you qualify as well, there's a there's this disabled pass as well. So you really want to take a look and figure out which pass is going to work best for you for access. Um, and then the applications for the process, because it is a national parks pass, it's going to be different. Um, so military veteran, military active duty, 
gold star, senior, disabled, and then they have a fourth grade one as well on the national side. So you just want to figure out which of those applications you want to start with. The website for it is under usgs.gov. And so again, at the end of the presentation, all those links will be up there. So you just want to navigate to this one. Same type of deal. You're going to create an account and you're going to begin that process. You want to make sure you understand which paths that you're going to go for. And then it's going to ask you some questions. It's going to help you kind of navigate. If you look at the arrows, you can see some of the questions coming up that they're going to ask you. Am I 62 years or older? Am I medically determined? Am I a current member of the U.S. military or a veteran or a gold star family? So the, the application process will help you navigate towards the one that's going to help you out the best. But it's good to have an idea of what you want before you get in there. And then once you start the process, it's pretty straightforward. And then they're going to determine eligibility. Same thing, they're going to want you to upload some documents. And uh, in general, if you are a veteran, you're going to apply for the lifetime. And if you're active duty, you apply for the annual. Here are the contact links, phone numbers, and email addresses for both California and the National Parks Pass. I'm going to leave these up for just a second. So that way, if you're trying to capture it, you know, you can hit print screen or copy or you can take a photo with your phone, screenshot. Uh, see my kids double tap on the back of the phone and do it. Everyone's got some kind of neat trick. But also remember that uh, my teammate's going to drop this whole PDF, uh, this, this whole uh, PowerPoint presentation as a, P as a PDF. That is a very big tongue twister. PowerPoint presentation as a PDF into the chat. So that way you can download it as well. Hunting and fishing. So when we talk about hunting and fishing, California has so much wildlife and awesome opportunities to go out there and really just enjoy that moment with nature. Go out and hunt and fish. It's not for everybody. It isn't. But for the people who enjoy it, they really enjoy it. And we just want to talk about some of the opportunities that are out there and also discuss some of the free days that you may not be aware of. So there are two departments of fish and wildlife, uh, the, the federal and the state, right? So for federal lands, Federal Department of Fish and Wildlife, and for state lines, it's the California Department of Fish and Wildlife with our beautiful golden bear with his tasty salmon in his mouth or her mouth. Kind of hard to tell bears. You know, I don't want to get close enough to figure that one out. On the federal side, you've got the federal lands, and you can see that their logo, and, and they're pretty clear about which lands are federal lands, but there's 14 million acres open to hunting throughout the United States. That's a lot of territory. And then there's up to 350 miles of river that's open to fishing. It's run by that department. Now, specifically on the California side, we have 1.1 million acres of public habitat. So that's a lot of land for you to explore and check out and, and have these experiences. Big thing in California is they are really, uh, they, they really changed how we uh, look at hunting and they want to focus on making sure that hunters are using non-leaded ammunition. And that's one of the requirements in all California lands. So, um, look, I'm not a chemist, but there's all kinds of stuff. There's copper, there's tin, there's bismuth. There's a wide variety of different types of ammunition that you can use that are not lead steel. There's all kinds of stuff. Um, no license is needed to fish public piers that are in the oceans or bay waters. That's something that I didn't know before. And it's kind of cool to see that because if you have those public piers, and they should have clear postings that you're allowed to do that without a fishing license. So in the state of California, there are special hunt days just for veterans and active duties. That's something really cool that California just puts out there. In addition to that, there's two free hunting days that they offer each year. Um, one just passed us on November 25th, and the next one coming up, I believe is April 13th, 2024. So those are some free days. So if it's something that you're into, definitely want to go in there and register for that. And then the free fishing days are the first Saturdays of July and September. And obviously the calendars are always changing. So you have to look into that and you want to make sure to go to the website and get the documents you need to enjoy those free days because the, having that kind of eligibility is really cool. On the federal side, you can see that um, when they, they manage the hunting and fishing on federal lands and the rules are expansive. So at the, again, at the end of this webinar, you can go into detail and look at the different rules under the doi.gov for hunting on federal lands. I really just want to make sure I focus specifically on California and answer those questions. If you're someone who wants to go beyond the United States and beyond California and do some ocean sport fishing, there is a huge thing that you can explore. Um, 
I put the drop down in there and the QR code so you can look at the different, like where the borders are. They really break it up into regions and it's cool. Uh, when you're looking at the maps where you can go, what the different rules are. And there's just a lot of great activities and just wonderful things you can see out in the ocean. I'm going to tell you that because I'm a Navy guy. I would tell you the ocean's great. But really, when you're ocean sport fishing, it's super cool. Uh, when it comes to California hunting and fishing licenses, again, prices always tend to vary. They change every year. So I don't want to get too much into the individual pricing. But we want to talk about one day, two days, annuals, wildlife taxes, all kinds of stuff out there. What I really want to focus on is what we're talking about. Uh, getting a go ID number because that's where it all starts. So for every customer that's going out there and you're purchasing like a fishing license or a hunting permit or an annual pass, you have to get what's called a go get outdoors. It's called a go ID number and it'll print up on all your licenses and, and track the purchases. And it really lets you uh, also do a good look back on what you've done. So to do that, you want to go to the calwildlifelicense.com. And uh, again, you're going to have to create a uh, create an account pretty straightforward pretty easy both departments uh, really make these uh, accessible and easy to navigate so when you're making this go ID number just like you would uh, with the other two we talked about it's going to be a very good user experience you shouldn't run into any challenges too much um, they're going to get a customer record and if you're new and you haven't created one yet you want to be give them a little bit of time uh, most websites are instantaneous but because they're doing background checks and stuff. They want to make sure that you, um, you give them time to pass it over. But if you've created too many accounts or you're running into challenges, or if you make a record and don't finish it within a day or two, and you need that assistance, the phone number is going to be right there. So you can uh, call a live agent and get some assistance with making sure that you get all that taken care of. And then you're going to navigate to the purchasing licenses, online sales and services. And then you're just going to navigate to the, uh, whether you're looking for a hunting tag, fishing license, you're going to navigate to the area that you need the most. Lots of different programs, disabled veteran hunting license, disabled veteran sport fishing and hunting license, um, recovering service member hunting license. This means if you are uh, on active duty, you're injured and you're still recovering, but you uh, have some time and you're able to go out and enjoy that uh, sport fishing or, or hunting, there, those reduced licenses will apply to you as well. Low income senior, low income Native American. And then if you have mobility or vision impaired, you want to look and see if you have that eligibility for those different types of licenses. And you would apply for all of those on the same website. So specifically when it comes to the disabled veteran hunting license, you have to have a service connected disability rating of 50% or higher. When it comes to the recovering service member hunting license, you just need to be go, undergoing medical treatment as an outpatient. And for those licenses, the, the estimated fee is going to be $8.64 for this year. And it's subject to change next year. Now, if you want to do sport fishing and hunting, then the requirements are going to be the same. It's going to be 50% service connected disability rating higher or undergoing medical treatment as an outpatient, but you would get the sport fishing and the hunting license, and it would be a total of $9.46 for this year. And then, of course, next year, that's subject to change. Doing that online application after you create your account, you have that Go ID number, the License and Revenue Branch really takes care of that. And you can navigate through the wildlife.ca.gov. And again, at the end of the presentation, you'll have those QR codes to help you if you've got immediate questions, we've got a couple of phone numbers down here. They're 1-800 number and then they're 916 number. 916, that kind of looks like it might be Sacramento, but that gives you um, an opportunity to speak to a live agent and get your questions answered. Really excellent department and they really go above and beyond to make sure that they're helping out the citizens and residents who want to uh, go out and hunt and fish and enjoy those kind of things. Here are some local addresses uh, for the Sacramento PO boxes and then for San Francisco for some of the different services. Obviously, California is a huge place, so you're going to find several locations throughout the state, but these are the, going to be the main offices and then the contact information, whether you want to send them an email, give them a phone call, or you want to send in some correspondence. These are the QR codes we were talking about earlier for both the federal side and uh, fishing guides and stuff, and they'll be in the PDF as well. I want to thank everybody for joining us today and for giving me the opportunity to talk a little bit about who we are and what we do. Uh, my counterpart, 
Kirk, he was talking about the local interagency network coordinators. Here's their different email addresses. And I just want to tell you that uh, absolutely, California is a huge place. We have 58 counties and they put these eight teammates of ours out there to just work out there. And I heard Kirk use the term a warm handoff. That's what it really is. These are live human beings that are out there to make sure that you as a veteran, as a family member, get the assistance that you need, whether it be for, you got questions about housing, um, you're looking for employment, you are, you have some educational goals that you're working on. These people are really there to help you out and, and do that. Also, when you call our phone numbers, uh, we're here to help you. So we want to make sure that we're answering your questions as well. And, and not just today or tomorrow, but beyond, we want to make sure that you know that we're here to help you navigate through the variety of programs that are out there. We have some more upcoming webinars. Later on this month, we've got uh, this disability and compensation and claims process. That one is, um, that one was yesterday. I apologize. Uh, on the 14th, we have the Department of Motor Vehicles programs. The DMV has a lot of cool programs that they work with um, the Department of Veteran Affairs. So it'd be an awesome opportunity to check those out. And then there's a career fair for the um, California Department of uh, Corrections. If you're interested in, in changing or looking into that career, it would be an awesome opportunity for you to do that. And of course, we do have a survey. If you have the opportunity, we would love your feedback because we really do take a look at that information and it helps us make improvements and provide the types of webinars that uh, people are really interested in. So I'll leave this up for a little bit. I want to thank everybody for their time today, and I definitely want to thank everybody for their service. Let's take a few minutes with Kirk and answer some questions that might come up. So, Kirk, again, thank you for uh, for leading us today and uh, putting this webinar together. Are there any questions in the Q&A that, that we can work together and, and answer for people? No, you know what? Uh, I think you covered everything very, very thoroughly and very well. So well, in fact, that I we don't have any questions in the chat. <laughs> right. um, <laughs> but um, no, we'll leave this up a little bit, I think. And uh, we're, we're uh, running early on time, so we're still available if anybody has any questions. I, I kind of had a question, uh, maybe a clarification, so to speak, about like the process for um uploading your documents for specifically the hunting and fishing license through once you get your ID, go ID from the uh, number. Don't you have a number? Uh, don't you have to request a secure email to have them send you a link to upload your documents for verification? Um, I believe when I did mine, I think I had to go through and I think you set your account up and then you send a link or you go to the email and you send them an email, they will respond back with your information uh, to send you a secure link to upload your documents for your fishing and hunting license. Is that correct? You are correct. I believe that they do that when you're originally starting the GoID account. They, right. you, you set it up and you give them your email address and then they reply back to that email. So as Kirk said, make sure that you're watching your account because you want to make sure you reply back right away. Um, yeah. But I think it times out. I think they give you a limited amount of time to upload your documents. I think so for that secure link. If I'm not correct, you are correct. It's about yeah. it's about 48 hours. So you want to make sure that you're paying attention to to that and and you're uh, you're you're on it when it comes yeah. to submitting that. Okay, we have some uh, questions coming in. Uh, we appreciate your thank yous. Uh, thank you so much for all of you, like Sean mentioned, for joining us. You know, I, I'm really excited about this webinar because it's very thorough and. You know, we get a lot of questions uh, on the phone about, hey, I'm. it's confusing. How do I do this? Where do I go to get my application? They don't know what the veteran, distinguished veteran pass is. So, you know, your questions here, uh, this is an opportunity for you to try and get them answered if you do want to get these licenses and these passes. And I encourage you to do so because as a veteran, you know, California is a great place to explore. And as a veteran, all veterans, from my opinion, should be free of charge, not just the service connected. So uh, let's go ahead and ask the first question was, does the veteran need to be in the car when the use of the pass? What if the veteran is deceased and 100 percent permanent disabled? Those are great questions. Uh, from my understanding, yes, the veteran has to be with the vehicle as it goes through the state park. Uh, from the federal side, I believe it's the same 
uh, same scenario. And I'm not sure about the um, if the veteran has passed, maybe for survivors of the veteran, if they're like 100% and they were service connected and permanent in total, and uh, they were receiving survivor benefits, they might be able to extend those passes out uh, after the veteran has passed. So um, we can find out about that. Put a question in there, uh, send, shoot us an email, and I'll, we'll do some research and get back with you on that, okay? I, I don't necessarily know the particulars on the um, if the, the veteran has passed. Um, so, and, and just to be clear, because sometimes the terminology, we might not be very clear about that. And if we're not, I do apologize. The term gold star does refer to a service member that has passed away on active duty or while on orders or deployment. And if that's the scenario that you're talking about, then that would be the gold star pass that uh, we talked about earlier. If that's the scenario that you're, if that's right. the scenario specifically. Okay, the next one, uh, thank you for the feedback on the presentation. Uh, elaboration on the hunt days, Sean, for veterans in active duty, what are the dates and what species and how can I find that information? So those are all great questions. Uh, I would go directly to the website for uh, Department of Fish and Game for California, and they'll give you the specific days for hunting for, um, uh, I didn't see the ones for 2024. I only saw the ones for 2023 that they had posted and those had already passed. So I don't remember off the top of my head, but there's uh, for, for the veteran ones specifically, but they do put that out there. So I would go to the website and get the specific days. But they're gonna be different each year. And there's different locations throughout the state. So you great. Keep an eye on that as well. Yeah, is a, it doesn't uh, have a limit on the species that you're eligible to hunt for, though, based on the free days, is there? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. I'm not really a, a hunter. so I, I would know. assume that it's probably <laughs> what is in season during those uh, free days. So obviously, they're not going to be out of season if you're uh, if deer season is closed and the free day is during duck season, you're not going to be out shooting a, <laughs> a deer, <laughs> I would imagine. Okay. Uh, are the DMV benefits only for 100% service connected disabled veterans? Um, that's a good question. Yes and no. Um, if you're going to receive specific um, benefits for like your registration fees waived uh, for your vehicle. Yes, that's 100%. But if you just want to have the veteran designation on your driver's license, any veteran can have that put on there. Uh, it, you don't have to have a service connected for that. Um, so I guess it, it's, it's one of the gray area questions. Well, I hope that answers it. Well, just to, and, and to expand on what Kirk is saying, there really is no um, veteran ID card. They just don't make one anymore. They used to. Um, if you have a service-connected disability, you can get a VHIC card. So that way you can go to the VA and get those services. But the state of California will add the veteran designation to your driver's license. And as Kirk was saying before, there's no fee for that. If you're looking for um, certain iconography on your driver's license, or excuse me, on your license plates, then uh, the DMV's got different programs for that. And then as Kirk said, if you're looking for that specific motor vehicle uh, registration fee waiver, which also now um, has the bridge toll waiver as well, if you're doing some of the bridges up in, is it the, can you elaborate on that, Kirk, for the bridges? Um, the bridges, I believe they are, is a new, I think they're trying to get the new law into effect, um, or it currently went into effect um, for veterans that are 100% So If you have a disabled veteran license plate and you go to like Fast Track or something and register your pass through them, whenever you go through the tolls or the bridges, like in the Bay Area, uh, they waive all fees for your vehicle if you're in that vehicle. So that's as far as I know. I think... Um, I believe they were trying to extend that out to Gold Star families. Weren't we having a discussion about that? There was some confusion as to whether it had not reached the Gold Star families yet, but they were trying to extend that out, but it hasn't been you know, established. Yeah, that's an excellent point, Kirk. And what we're telling people right now is that if you are a Gold Star family member, that apply with Fast Track. And because um, they're the ones that, that navigate you through that, and they will absolutely. 100% um, help you out. When we called and talked to them on the phone about it, looking for clarity, 
they were super helpful and just an awesome department. So definitely. Yeah. Okay, the next question, uh, I, you know, also elaborating a little bit more on the DMV benefits. Um, I, I do want to mention that we do have other options for their not just benefits, but also enhancements. You can actually apply for like the veteran uh, honoring veteran license plates and things like that, that um, are not just for disabled veterans. They're open to the public. So if you want to have your military designation or your unit um, logo or something like that on your license plate, you can actually do that through the DMV. So that's actually another, it's, it's wouldn't really call it a benefit, but um, it is, uh, it is something that is offered through the Department of Motor Vehicles uh, to honor veterans. So okay. I hope that's clear. Yeah, uh, the next question is about the uh, home buying benefits for disabled veterans. I'm going to post a link to our contact information in our home loans department. Our division for home loans is very, very excellent. Highly encouraged. I am not an expert on it, but I know it is a great program. Our colleague, Brad Pedersen, is the home loan specialist who travels with us to our locations, provides outreach and information on um the home loans program. Uh, so I, he's more than welcome to put his contact information in there uh, to access any questions regarding home loans for veterans in the state of California. You can go to our website and look up the home loans process, but I would talk with him directly, his phone number, his email. Um, he's very accommodating. He can provide you information about current trends, what the rates are right now, um, I know I spoke with a home loan specialist on Tuesday, and currently the I think the percentage rates, the interest rates right now are trending lower than the market is. So um, CalVet tends to trail what the national and the state markets do for interest rates as they go up. CalVet trends below as they go down. CalVet trends above. So um, that's just how things work from them. But um, individually. It's a great program. Reach out to Brad and uh, he would be more than happy to give you some assistance. I think you get as a disabled veteran of 30% or greater, I think you can have your closing costs and things like that waived. So uh, there are some benefits for disability compensation uh, for veterans. So, and uh, I know that the uh, insurance policy through a CalVet loan is excellent. It's a $250 two full cost replacement deductible. Uh, I know that for a fact because I've heard this many times. Uh, and it's an excellent policy uh, to replace your home, full cost replacement, no matter what the damage. If it was totally lost in the fire, $250 deductible, full cost replacement. So uh, uh, it's a great program. Call Brad. He can assist you. Okay. That's it for questions. Well, I definitely want to thank everybody for their time today. and. Um... Apologies, I'm trying to figure out exactly what the time is. It says it's 1048. So what I want to do is I, I want to make sure that we give 10 minutes back to people. So we'll, yeah. leave this, uh, we'll leave this up for a couple of minutes just so people can um, transcribe whatever information they need. And then, uh, again, Kirk had put a bunch of information into the, the chat. So we'll leave you some time to, uh, down, to download whatever documents you need. But we'll leave this, uh, this up for the next 10 minutes. And then if you have any follow on questions you can always ask us again thank you so much for your service thank you to your families and thank you for joining us in the presentation today kirk thank you sir for having me and, and inviting us to this presentation so hey sean you did a great job i uh, that was a very thorough presentation on the parks um uh, you know i'm going to leave this up as well and then if anybody posts anything in the question we'll be out available to ask it in the next five, 10 minutes or so. Uh, we won't log off right until 11 o'clock. So if you do have a question, don't feel like we're going to neglect you. But if we do log off and you have something after, please email CalVet or CalTAP and we can respond back to your question. I did post the veteran resource book, the link map, and a PDF of this presentation in the chat one more time uh, for your convenience. Uh, and again, um, I'm going to put the uh, CalTAP email box in there for you as well. Okay, so um, just reach out to us if you have any questions after the fact. And uh, for that person that was interested in the question about, uh, you know, veterans who've passed and the benefit, please email us 
and uh, we can get that question back to you. So um, I need to do a little more research and some digging on that uh, specifically for service connected at 100%, okay? So, all right, again, thank you everyone for joining us. You're welcome to log off. Unless you have a question, you can uh, post it in the Q&A and we'll, we'll stay on.